Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. We're going to talk about how sound waves interact. Now this is really crucial to understand if you want to have good sounding recordings and good sounding mixes, you got to know what phase is and what comb filtering is, what causes it and how to avoid it. So we're going to take a look at some waveforms and I'm going to show you in detail what happens when you duplicate a waveform and blend it back with itself and then change the timing or change the pitch of the duplicated waveform. Okay, I'm going to start by explaining what phase is. So here I have a note of 50 hertz. Now I'm going to duplicate it. There we go. Now we have two notes of 50 hertz. So when I play these two notes together, it'll be double the volume compared to playing one by itself. So here's the sound of playing one by itself. And here's the sound of playing both of them together. I'll toggle it on and off. So you can hear it definitely gets louder when I toggle the second one on. That's because these two sounds are identical and they're in phase with each other. And what that means is, as we look here, you can see on the up wave is met with another up wave. And as time goes on, this down wave blends together with another down wave. So what happens is they get doubled up. And as time goes on, see in the neutral position, both of them are in neutral, so it's still neutral. And that's why it gets twice as loud when you blend these two together, because the waves are literally doubled up. But what happens if I take the one that was doubled and move it over like that? Now, this down wave blends together with an up wave. And what happens is these two waves will actually cancel each other out. And it'll drastically reduce the volume or you won't hear anything at all. So let's give it a listen. I'll play the 50 hertz track by itself and I'll toggle on and off the doubled track. So as you can hear, the volume goes right down to almost nothing because it's cancelling it out. And the reason you can hear it just a really little bit is because I didn't line it up perfectly. If, you, if I really zoom in, um, you can see here the zero crossing is right there and here the zero crossing is there. So if I line it up just perfect, then it'll cancel itself out 100%. I'll toggle it on and off again. Okay, so I'll zoom back in. Now this is called moving the phase by 180 degrees. If I were to move the phase by 360 degrees, that would be a full rotation. So that would be an entire wavelength and we'd be back with an up wave meeting with an up wave. Or zero degrees, an up wave meeting with an up wave. And if I were to move this 90 degrees out of phase, then I would be putting the crest of an up wave where the neutral spot is there. So that's what 90 degrees out of phase would look like. And here's what 90 degrees out of phase would sound like. So it still sounds louder and still doubling up on it, but it's also causing some harmonics, some additional sounds that aren't part of either of these. Now let's take a little look at what happens when I take a 50 hertz wave and blend it together with a 40 hertz wave. Now the 40 hertz wave, as you can see, the wavelengths are longer than the 50 hertz wave. Lower frequency notes have longer wavelengths than higher frequency notes. So on the 40 hertz wave, our zero crossing is right here. On the 50 hertz wave, our zero crossing is right there. And then our second zero crossing is right there on the 50 hertz wave. And it's right there on the 40 hertz wave. As you can see, they keep getting farther and farther away from each other. This is, the next one is right there, and then right there. So what happens when these two sounds are blended together, so the first initial one, we have an up wave called a crest, meeting another up wave called a crest. Um, and so these two up waves are being blended together to form one large up wave. I'm going to zoom out a little, make that easier to see. Okay, so this plus this equals this. And at any point where I put the playhead, whatever, whatever the wave is at, you could sum that with the wave from the other one, and that'll give you the position of the wave on the summed track. So if I put the playhead at this zero crossing, so here it's zero, and here it's plus that much. So on the summed track, it's plus that much. That should be the same distance there and there. And if I put it on the zero crossing here, then 
whatever that value is, it should be about the same. That looks about the same to me. Right? So if I go right there, that much plus that much equals that much. So these two waves are just being summed together to give one wave. So initially, we have a crest meeting a crest to produce a larger crest. But because the two waves are a different size, as we move on with time, eventually we have a crest meeting a trough, an up wave meeting a down wave. And that produces, well, this much minus this much, and that gives us minus that much. Right? Um, right about there, they're actually neutral. This much minus this much produces zero. And then here's a zero crossing where they're both actually pretty close to the zero, just slightly above zero, so it's slightly above zero. So what we see here when these two waves are blended together is right here, the waves are in phase with each other, but then with a little bit of time, they become out of phase. And then with a little bit more time, they become back in phase right here. They're back in phase of crest, a trough meeting a trough. And then throughout time again, they'll become out of phase again. So they keep alternating in and out of phase with each other. So let's take a look at the waveform that that creates. So here's the summed waveform of the 40 hertz wave and the 50 hertz wave being blended together. So you can see that it gets quiet and it gets loud. Quiet section, loud section, quiet section, loud section, quiet section, loud section. And this is real life. This is what the waves do in the air and in real life, wherever you are, if there's a 40 hertz note playing and a 50 hertz note playing, they will do this. Now here's what the 40 hertz note sounds like by itself. Here's what the 50 hertz note sounds like by itself. And when I blend them together, here's what both of them sound like. Do you hear that? The wah, 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 wah. You can hear it going in and out of phase. It kind of flutters a little bit. And you don't get a 40 hertz note, neither do you get a 50 hertz note. You get kind of a muddy mess somewhere in between that wobbles. And this is relevant for when you're mixing and mastering, because if you have two notes playing at the same time, especially if it's two bass notes and they're close to each other, you're not going to get either of those notes with clarity. You're going to get this kind of a wobbly mess that's somewhere in between the two. Now this exact same thing happens when you're tuning an instrument. I'm going to play a couple notes on this guitar and you won't be able to differentiate the notes really by hearing them by themselves, but you can tell if they're in tune with each other or out of tune for each other by listening for that wobble. Let's give it a try. Just a hint of a wobble there. So they're actually pretty close to being in tune with each other, but I'm going to deliberately make it out of tune. hear the wobble? So, right now, this A string is a little bit flat. So I'm going to move it up. And you don't hear the note being changed in pitch, you just hear that wobble going away. I'll do it again. I'm going to detune it again. There we go. Now we're in tune. And if I make this note just a little bit too sharp now, hear that wobble come back again. So they're out of tune, so I'll just flatten it a little. Still a little bit of a wobble there. There we go. The wobble is almost entirely gone, so I know that those two notes are in tune with each other now.
Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what happens if I take a note and duplicate it and delay that duplicate by about 3 milliseconds and what happens when I play the two together and especially how different frequencies are affected differently by the same amount of delay. So here's our old friend, 50 hertz. If I play this by itself, there we go. So I'm going to duplicate this. And now we have two notes of 50 hertz. And as you can see, they are in phase with each other. A crest beats a crest and a trough meets a trough. So I'm going to toggle on and off the duplicate and you'll hear the volume get louder when it's turned on. There we go. Now I'm going to delay this duplicate by about three milliseconds. So I'll move my playhead one, two, three. There we go. See three right there. That number actually doesn't represent milliseconds, but coincidentally, a three there is approximately three milliseconds. So I'll move that to match it. There we go. Now this has a three millisecond delay. And if we take a look, a crest still meets a crest pretty much. And a trough still pretty much meets a trough. I mean, they aren't perfect, but generally they're pretty close. I mean, it's still going to double up on itself. We'll take a listen how that sounds as I toggle on and off the duplicate. Sounds pretty much the same. It doesn't really affect it too much. But as we go into higher frequencies, that same amount of delay will affect it differently because the wavelengths are smaller. Take a look at this wavelength. It pretty much takes up this entire portion of the screen for one wavelength. But as I go down, see here's 100 hertz, and there's one wavelength right there. From there, from there, that zero crossing to that zero crossing. That's a wavelength. See, it takes up pretty much half. Well, 100 hertz will be exactly half of 50 hertz because it's double the frequency. So within the same time space, there's twice as many vibrations. But let's go all the way up to 300. All right, there's our 300. I'm going to duplicate this. There, now we have two identical signals. Here's what it sounds like by itself, and I'll toggle on and off the duplicate. As you can hear, it gets louder because they're perfectly in phase with each other. An up wave meets an up wave, down wave meets a down wave. But if I delay it by that same three milliseconds, so there we are, we're at three milliseconds, and I'll take this duplicate and move it right there. Now what's happened is a down wave meets with an up wave. Because the wavelengths are smaller, the same amount of delay will actually change the phase relationship. So now they're 180 degrees out of phase from each other. And let's hear how they sound when I toggle the second one on and off. As you can hear, when the second one is toggled on, it cancels out the sound. And here we are at 600 hertz. As you can see, the wavelengths are even smaller now. They're half the size that they are at 300 hertz. So if I take this duplicate track, let's play the two together and I'll toggle on and off the duplicate. Right? As long as they're in phase, then the duplicate doubles up the sound. But if I move it that same three milliseconds, one, two, three, three milliseconds, as I move it, see right about there, it's out of phase by 180 degrees, and then go the rest of the way, and it's back in phase again. You can see a crest meets a crest, a trough meets a trough. So let's play this and see how it sounds when I toggle it on and off. There we go. See, it doubles up on it because it's still in phase. That three millisecond moved it an entire wavelength so that it's back in phase again. Now let's take a look at 970 hertz. Here's what it sounds like by itself. And I'll toggle on the duplicate. See, as long as the duplicate is in phase, it doubles up on itself. See, currently it's in phase. Crest meets a crest, trough meets a trough. But if I go the three milliseconds of delay, one, two, three, there we go and I'll move this over to there. As I move it, you can see right there, it's out of phase. Right there, it's in phase. And then to our three milliseconds and it's out of phase again. Look at that. So we moved it a wavelength and a half. So at 970 hertz, three milliseconds represents a wavelength and a half, which puts it out of phase, which puts it 180 degrees out of phase. See, a trough meets a crest. A crest meets a trough. So I'll play this and we'll hear how it sounds as I toggle on and off the duplicate.
So as you can hear, it cancels itself out. So just a quick little recap, at 50 hertz, the wave doubled up on itself. At 300 hertz, the wave canceled itself out. At 600 hertz, the wave doubled up on itself. At 970 hertz, the wave canceled itself out. Are you seeing a pattern here? Let's take a look at some white noise. What white noise is, is it's a noise that has all the different frequencies playing at the same time. So here's our white noise track. Let's give it a listen. There we go, isn't that exciting? So I'm going to duplicate this track now. And now because it's a duplicate, I just zoomed in on the waves. Um, see an up wave meets with an up wave. It's exactly the same. So it'll just be twice as loud as I toggle this on and off. We'll give that a listen. There we go. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Let's get our three milliseconds of delay. One two, three. There we go. There's our three there. Boom. There we go. So now I'm going to toggle on and off this white noise and you're going to hear this effect, which is called comb filtering. Now, the reason the white noise sounds kind of weird as I toggle the delayed duplicate on and off is because Exactly what I showed you with those waves is happening there. At 50 hertz, the volume is being doubled. At 300 hertz, the sound is being cancelled out. At 600 hertz, it's being doubled. At 970 hertz, it's being cancelled out. Let's take a look at a frequency analyzer as I play these. Here we have our two tracks, and I'll be toggling this one on and off. But for now, we'll just listen to the white noise by itself, and we'll evaluate the frequency response. So as you can see, there's volume, there's sound being emitted at all the different frequencies. Now, when I turn on the duplicate track that has a 3 millisecond delay, watch what happens with that analyzer graph. So as you can see from the graph, it's being boosted and cut and boosted and cut. Now let's take a closer look to what frequencies are being boosted and what frequencies are being cut. See, between 50 and 200, it's basically being boosted at right about here. At that frequency, we're at 325, that's being cut. And right around here in this range at about 580, so that's close to 600, even at 600, it's being boosted. Right at this one here, at 970, it's being cut. Right here at 1240, it's being boosted. And then at 1620, it's being cut. So do you see the pattern there? The same frequencies that we looked at when we zoomed in on the waves, if they were in phase, they boosted each other, and if they were out of phase, they cancelled each other out. And those are the same frequencies being boosted and cancelled on the analyzer graph that we looked at there. And if we changed the amount of delay from 3 milliseconds to, say, 2 milliseconds, then the frequencies that are boosted and the frequencies that are cut will change. Or if we change the delay to four or five or six milliseconds, then that'll continuously change which frequencies are being boosted and which frequencies are being cut. For instance, here we are with one millisecond of delay. And two milliseconds of delay. Three milliseconds of delay. Five milliseconds of delay. See, at 5 milliseconds, there's a cut at 200 hertz, another cut at roughly 5 or 600 hertz. And that's why it's called a comb filter, because the shape of the frequency response on an analyzer has the appearance of a hairbrush or a comb. And why is this so important in recording? Because quite often a sound gets duplicated and then blended back with the original with a little bit of a delay. It happens more often than you might think. For instance, if you're in a room and there's a wall nearby, sound goes directly from the source into the microphone, but also travels to the wall and bounces back and goes into the microphone. Sound travels at a speed of approximately one foot every millisecond. So if there's a wall 10 feet away, it'll take about 10 milliseconds for the sound to go, hit that wall, and another 10 seconds for the sound to come back. So there'll be an identical signal coming back and hitting the microphone with a delay of approximately 20 milliseconds. Same thing goes if you're recording, say, drums. You have a close-up mic on your snare and you have your overheads. Now when the snare is hit, the sound travels out of that snare drum and goes into the close-up snare mic almost immediately. But if your overheads are three or four feet away, then it'll take three or four milliseconds for that sound to come from the snare 
into those overheads, so you'll have two identical signals, but from the overheads, it'll be delayed by three or four milliseconds, causing comb filtering. Another example is if you have a vocalist who plays guitar, and you stick a microphone in front of the guitar and a microphone in front of their vocals. The microphone that's in front of the guitar picks up the guitar almost immediately after it's played. It's only about a foot in front of the guitar, so there's roughly a one millisecond delay from the time the sound leaves the guitar and enters that microphone but the vocal microphone is approximately two feet away from the guitar. So there's a two second delay from the time the sound comes out of the guitar and into that microphone. And therefore the vocal microphone will be delayed by one millisecond compared to the guitar microphone. And that one millisecond is still enough to cause comb filtering. And it also happens with the guitar mic picking up the vocals because that microphone is about three feet away from the vocalist's mouth and the vocal microphone is uh, maybe a foot away from the vocalist's mouth. Therefore, the guitar mic will pick up the vocals approximately two milliseconds later than the vocal microphone will, causing comb filtering. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. This is a really important concept to understand. So if you have any questions, just ask in the comment section down below. Go have yourself an awesome day and please do me a favor and high five that like button down there.